good, and he's making some really good laps right here. And, I, and we heard that this tire held up well, and it's showing that it is. It's a good move, possibly, for the Bliss team. What did you say at the top of the show? The longer you run this tire, the faster it gets? That's what a lot of guys said. They said it usually, uh, you know, the, they heat up, and the heat actually makes the tire slow down, but it, new tires really didn't help much. Bit of a slip a moment ago by Clint Boyer. Went way up across the racetrack. Got to believe uh, he's got some things bent in the front of that car trying to hold on. Here is Kevin Harvick in his own car going by the 29 of Wimmer. That's for six spot. Here's a look at our Holiday Inn Express race summary thus far. There have been three different leaders, three different lead changes. Mike Bliss currently our leader. Average speed thus far, just over 112.4 miles per hour. We've been under caution three times. There are 20 cars on the lead lap, and we have had 15 laps of caution. Kyle Busch has led the most laps. He has led twice for 97 of 113 laps. Battle here for 13th position. Carl Edwards trying to hold on on the 88 of Brad Keselowski. Mike. It's been a tough day for Brad Keselowski, especially on pit road. Last time down under caution, their first stop, the car fell off the jack twice. During that stop, one of the crew members was also injured. The front tire carrier, Michael Sandlin, injured his hand. He's been taken to the care center. He's been replaced on that team by a member of the five team, Jeff Show, for the remainder of this race, Doc. Here's the incident. Now watch the front tire carry. The jack pops and he's got his hand stuck in there between the car and the tire. Oh, yeah, I, I know that hurts. And also happened to the guy on the right rear, we we're told as well, Andy. Yeah, they, there's a guy back there that was working when that jack fell also. We just didn't get a camera shot of him, but uh, that's kind of a dangerous situation when that car falls off the jack. Brad trying to make up some time. Remember, these two guys were second and third in the points going into the last two races. And Brad Keselowski has had some miserable luck, finished 33rd at California and 21st at Richmond. There's the 18 car taking the uh, second spot away. He's now got second spot, but Mike Bliss is still running lap time faster than Kyle Busch when Kyle's been, been in this traffic. We'll see once they get out here in clean air how fast this 18 car can, uh, can go, see if he can match the lap times or actually beat Mike Bliss. Yeah. I think that'd be the equalizer if if the 18 had run in traffic all day and then everybody else could yeah. not be in. But obviously, that can't happen. It seems to be, but he's right on the bottom. Still a very good car. Saw the margin a moment ago. It's just a little over three seconds between Bliss and Kyle Busch, who is coming. Lap 117 of 200, Mike Bliss is our leader. Back at Dover, Mike Bliss's lead was three and a half seconds a moment ago. It is uh, almost two and a half seconds. Kyle Busch has cut a second off of the lead. There is Bliss, the leader, flashing by the start-finish line, and there comes Kyle Busch, who has led 97 laps today. Yeah, and it's not because the 18 is that much faster. It's just Mike Bliss is encountering lap traffic, and it's taking him a little bit more time. He's kind of caught the guys at the wrong spot. 59 car Marcus Ambrose. Remember, he's the team car to Kelly Byers that had that uh, huge lick in the wall in turn one. Watch this uh, anxious moment. Yeah, a little bit loose up. No, Whoa, that's a lot, a lot loose, loose up out of the corner. It's in the, the wall, wall, too. Not a lot. That's minimal damage there as we watch it from Brad Keselowski's view here coming up out of turn four. Yeah, that's when you're thinking you're Stay low there, stay low there, stay low, 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 watch that 60, got to run. He was 11th, now he's back to 13, talking about Marcus Ambrose there. Now, a moment ago, an incident involving the 20 car of Joey Logano. Logano was uh, battling the 99 car of David Rudiman in ninth position. These guys get real close together right here off the corner. Right there, you see the right side exhaust pipe of the 99 cut the left rear tire on this 20 car of Joey Logano, and that sent Joey Logano to the pits with a flat left rear. Yeah, he went from running in the top 10 to two laps behind now. Yeah, that's great camera work. We got that shot there. You can see how that exhaust pipe can just rip the side out of the tire. 
He came on and off pit road. That's what's left of the tire, the old exhaust pipe into the rear tire routine, huh? That'll take care of it right there. No match. It's kind of a mismatch right there. Exhaust pipe <laughs> against the tire. <laughs> Logano, he lost two laps by that pit stop and changing tires. He's now being shown back in 26th position. Cousin Carl on the move in the 60 car, trying to move in on 11th spot. His teammate, David Reagan. Yeah, he's starting to come back to life a little bit here. He had fallen back quite a bit, and we see some damage on the left front of his car from that uh, apparently contact on pit road. It looked like it might have might have hurt the, the handling on Carl's car, but he has moved himself back into the 11th spot now. How about Josh Wise in his 22 car up in the top 10? Done a great job here. And he continues to impress that you know every, every time that he gets in these race cars and good race cars he just shows what kind of talent he has and just wait for the day that he gets in and, and not to take away from the equipment that he's in there but but certainly it's not uh, capable of winning races i think he's probably less capable than what he is right now he's he's showing that he has the talent to win if you give him the right car you can see a shot right there carl Edwards' car he's got some damage on that left front fender up on the top side that's probably hurting him his yeah. car so Carl Edwards came into the day 207 points behind Clint Boyer in the battle for the championship. Boyer's had his issues with Carl, both on pit road. More on Carl is checking with Jamie. Well, when that happened, Doc, he lost about nine positions on pit road. But since that incident, Carl hasn't said that it affected his car negative at all. I think it's actually helped him. He just came on the radio a few moments ago and said, my car's free enough just a little bit. It's not as tight as it's been all race so guys it's one of those fortunate situations for the 60 car unlike uh, the two car club boyer he's struggling with that car guys yeah jamie it might have just reshaped that fender enough to help him actually you know most times you think it hurts the aerodynamics but there could be a situation where it could enhance them that's so totally different than what we're used to here in the past that cars would always tighten up as you ran on so his car is freeing up some i would have to say that would be a good thing the two car of Boyer who got damage on both the left and right front fender has been mired back in 19th position. He is the last car on the lead lap. Let's listen in. Frustration on the part in, uh, of one driver and Kevin Harvick off the pace, headed to the garage area. He's done. He's pulling in the garage. It's usually a sign of an engine problem. He had moved all the way up into the top five. And uh, the two-time champion, Rusty, headed to the garage area. Yeah, it really is. We have to check this problem out. I heard this is a new designed engine out of Richard Childress Racing. So the guys are trying to pep up these SB2 Chevrolet engines. Uh, Try to get ready for next year and see if they can make as much power as the uh, Toyota and the R07 I'm here. And so we'll have to find out what happened here. Yeah, we can. Uh, we saw him put the car up into gear and, and drive. You could hear it running, but that must be. It'll be interesting to find out exactly what is wrong with Kevin Harvey's cars. We see our leader, Mike Bliss, here. He's, He's still got a two-second lead. Yeah. On, on Kyle Busch, He's doing a great job holding this this interval. I think we need to point out right now is we have uh, 63 laps to go at this point. Nobody can make it from here, I don't believe, Andy. Is that correct? No, they have to make one more pit stop. And uh, these guys here, the one car, they pitted last on, like, lap 72. And uh, these other guys pitted on, like, 99. So they both have to make stops. Kevin Harvey climbing out of the car. He had moved up to third position early in the race and then dropped back. And... Uh, Couple of puffs of smoke out of this car. Yeah, a little bit of smoke out of the right side. Yeah, yeah, he knew. He, yeah, he's definitely got a problem here. He, that's definitely an engine problem. More than likely a piston or a valve. It's unfortunate. Kevin had a great car today, and I know that he looked at this as a, one of those races. We keep talking about him trying to get his first win in his own car. Not going to happen today. See all the guys, the crew guys scrambling around trying to figure out what it is. Let's hear what he said, uh, told the team a moment ago. Boy, that's it. I got no brakes. Brakes don't work at all, Shane, so I don't know how we're going to stop it. Yes, that's why I was thinking how, how we, where we need to pull in. I don't know if we come on the pit road or, or try to slow down enough to get into the garage. So that's not an engine after all. We got, got a crash, crash on the track. Four. 
Trouble on a racetrack, the four car, Derek Cope involved. The 11 car, Scott Legacy, there's Cope. He will continue on. Legacy coming down right across the racetrack. Or if he just got into the car on the entry. We're done. Heavy damage on this 11 car. Legacy getting in the car and uh, replacing Jason Keller this week. And, uh, that car pretty much is done for the day. Fourth caution flag today, lap 141, and this will be a break, particularly for uh, the leader, Mike Bliss, who was going to have to pit in about seven or eight laps. The others had about 20 more laps to go. They can all make it from here, so you'll see these guys on pit road. Yeah, another break was for Clint Boyer, who was the next car to be lapped. He was only about two and a half seconds ahead of our leader, Mike Bliss, so it's going to leave him on the lead lap. See the two cars get together. 11 car just looked like he might have blown a right front tire. I don't know if he got loose there and corrected it into the four or, or if he blew a right front tire to start with. Yeah, we thought that we thought Harvick had an engine problem. It sure looked like it, but right here they're having a brake issue. Looks like the caliper's actually come apart. It's the brake caliper and rotor assembly. Well, let's check in on our Castrol GTX triple pits. This could be the money stop. Maybe the last time they're on pit road. Jamie. And Jason Leffler's best finish this year, fourth. He's been running third now for quite a few laps. He says the car's pretty good. It's still in tick tight. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment. Two rounds down on that track bar. Four tires of fuel for 38. Mike. Mike Bliss says the car gets tighter as the run goes on. He's looking for an air pressure adjustment. A half pound in the right rear, just trying to free him up a little bit. Otherwise, he's real happy with his car, Dave. A little tight to the center, very good off. More tires, air pressure out of the air right front and the right rear. And Snoko Fuel in the 18, again, slow on this stop. Again, only beat out by one car. Only two tires for Scott Wimmer. He will gain three spots and be the first car off of pit road. Kyle Busch, the air pressure adjustments, he will be in second spot. There is Bobby Hamilton Jr., the Ed Renzi on car up nine positions. Crew camera, rear tire carrier, Ben Steger from Fairfax, Virginia for Stephen Wallace on the 66th car. Can Stephen Wallace get yet another top 10 at Dover? Good pit work for this team here. Back with a green flag in just a moment. Lap 144, the Camping World RV Sales 200. This is Kevin Harvick's car in the garage area. They're trying to find out what happened with the brake assembly here in the front of the car. Now they're taking this hubcap off right here to see if they have a wheel bearing that's gone out, and it looks like that might be the case. They have a, you know, a lot of heat. You can see in that hubcap. You see all that wear in that rotor. That means something gave loose. Some, something came loose in that spindle assembly. And that's what when created his brake problem, Andy? Yeah, what happened is it just, you lose control of that hub and it just starts wobbling inside that caliper and uh, starts knocking the pads all over the place. So the smoke we were seeing coming out of the car was coming underneath the car and out the side. It was actually probably the grease out of that hub and maybe some brake fluid getting on the headers and on this hot spindle. When he finds out what rubber. happens, there's probably going to be some coming out of his ears too, right? <laughs> that, that, yeah. Not going to be very happy about Something like that happened. Just uh, you don't hear much of that anymore, especially in a 200-mile race. No, there's no. You know, you're not supposed to have that kind of problem. I don't care if it's a thousand-mile race. That wheel bearing is supposed to live a long time. You can see here they do have a wheel bearing issue. They're trying to get. They need to get this off, this nut off of here, so they can get that hub and or that rotor assembly off, and the hub, so they can change the spindle. They'll have to change the entire assembly over there. It's hot of that got it probably almost welded in there. It's welded now. Let's go down to Tim Brewer and see if he can help us uh, shed some light on this. Hey, Andy, you're exactly right. Folks, this is a cutaway front hub right here. And the Temkin people, they've been making these bearings for a long time, and I've never seen one burn up. Because what you have is when that oil comes away from that bearing, like Andy says, this thing right here literally eats away at itself, and it begins flopping back and forth. And that's the reason you've seen all that wear on the rotor. But as far as the Temkin company, hey, they've made quality parts and wheel bearings. All you have to do is maintenance these things and pack them properly. You never have an issue with them. But when Kevin Harvick evaluates what happened there, I'd say somebody's going to be in deep trouble. <laughs> Our leader, Scott Wimmer, remember he only took two tires. He uh, was the first car off of pit road. Kyle Busch in second spot. There is Mike Bliss, who was the leader when the caution came out. Yeah, we talked about two tires here. It doesn't happen much. Uh, you don't do see that happen many times, but we got a new right side tire. Let's see what Scott Wimmer can do with those two. We mentioned Wimmer won at Nashville early in the year on concrete, brought the same concrete winner that he had at Nashville. But right now he's uh, going to get his doors blown off by